I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space, and none will be so difficult or expensive to accomplish. You're in the White House. These are momentous times. It's 1961. Uh, we're in the height of the Cold War. The energy. How would you describe the energy in the White House, uh, Mr. Bolden? Was it was it tense? Uh, the the Kennedys obviously had a, had good senses of humor. There must have even in some of the tough times. There must have been moments of, of very human behavior. And and laughter and things and uh, did, give it, I'm just guessing, but tell me if I'm right or wrong and or what your observations were when you were there. What was it like? My observations was it was somewhat tense. I I tell you why. During my uh, stay there, the president had had suffered that back injury, and yes. uh, he was on crutches much of the time, and they were concerned about that uh, back injury as to whether or not he was going to have to have some serious operation and be able to continue uh, for for an extended amount of time as president of the United States. Mm-hmm. So now I, I saw these things with uh, uh, Dr. Travell, uh, who was the uh, first uh, woman doctor to be the attendant of the president of the United States to be mm-hmm. appointed to that position. Um uh, in Virginia, as a matter of fact, um, uh, the president uh, would exercise uh, during the morning and in an attempt to try to uh, gain his strength in walking again. But it was a tense situation around there. Yes. There was a lot of conferences and there was a lot of shouting back and forth between the president uh, and the vice president, Lyndon B. Johnson. Oh, uh, this is interesting now. So, okay. Let me let me go there just a little bit. It is, as you know, suggested that LBJ not only hated John Kennedy, but was somehow privy to his death in advance. It is it is suggested that that is so. Would that surprise you, Mr. Bolden, after what you have seen and heard the shouting and so forth? How would you describe their relationship? Well, I, I have no, absolutely no hard evidence that uh, President Johnson was involved in the assassination of uh, President Kennedy. However, I can attest to the fact that during my uh, stay there in June, uh, I heard um, uh, quite an argument coming out of the Oval Office. President Johnson was inside the Oval Office. Vice President, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, Vice President Johnson was in the Oval Office discussing some matter with President Kennedy. Well, when Johnson exited the uh, the the office, he slammed the door so hard that I I imagine it shook half of the White House. Wow! So that was really an argument that was brewing in, inside, mm-hmm. and and the vice president mumbled something uh, under his breath. You know, uh, Vice President Johnson used a lot of profanity. He said some profane words. Yes. That I don't want to repeat over the telephone, but yes. there were definitely some uh, bad things that were going on there right. that particular night. Now I can't say that this this happened every day or anything like that, but I remember particularly that day because it stuck in my mind uh, on November the twenty second when the president was assassinated in nineteen sixty three. That particular moment uh, stuck in my mind the time that. Uh, President, the Vice President Johnson exited the office and slammed the door. That is uh, seemingly an extraordinary event in and of itself. It not only shows disrespect for the office, but for the traditions of this country. Uh, the man was obviously, shall we say, uh, not out of control, but in a rage. That's, that's Yes, yes, yeah. he was in a rage, quite a rage. Uh, All right. He stomped out of the office. No, um, if I might ask one other thing, uh, Mr. Bolton, please, this is, and we'll dispense with this because it is important. Uh, it is known that when George Bush was in the, the White House for all of those agonizing years, uh, that he had a lot of visitors, overnight visitors, uh, one of them uh, named Jeff Gannon, 
who checked into the Oval Office around 150 times. I'm going to round it off. And in many of those instances, didn't check out until the next day. Uh, the logs, I would assume, during President Kennedy's tenure were accurate and, and kept very meticulously. Is that, a, is that a correct statement? Yes, yes. People were logged in and out. That's right. All right. Now, and I'm not going to dwell on this much, but the common nomenclature has it that John Kennedy uh, liked women. And that's fine. It kind of goes with the power. It's such almost an aphrodisiac when you get up at that level of world politics. Were there women coming and going? I don't care how many. Uh, did you notice uh, John Kennedy's predilection toward women? No, I didn't. I, I, I can't say that I actually witnessed any uh, outlandish conduct by uh, President John Kennedy. Uh, because, number one, I wasn't there uh, quite long enough, and uh, mm -hmm. I never saw absolutely any indiscretion by our president. Well, he was also on crutches, so good. Yes, right. that's right. That's we'll, leave, right. we'll leave it, it at that. One quick question uh, along those lines. Uh, Ms. Bolden, did you, does the name Mary Pichon Meyer, M-E-Y-E-R, mean anything to you? Mary Meyer? Did you ever see Mary Meyer in the White House? She was married to Cord Meyer, a CIA officer. Does that name not, ring a bell, to, or did you ever see her? Not to my recollection. I may, might have seen her without uh, being able to identify her. She okay. was never brought to my attention. Okay. All right, very good. Now, we have about a minute and a half until our, our break. We have to take one break this hour, Mr. Bolden. And I, I want to get to the 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 part of this that... That is amazing. And I want to also, if I might take this moment, to invite all of you listening to go to the top middle of rents.com and look at the YouTube video, Jeff Rents Collection. Because in there, you're going to find a five part series with Jim Mars and I and Jim's last visit on May 24th, in which he talked at great detail and made history come alive about Lee Harvey Oswald. And the fact that Lee Harvey Oswald might have been the Lee who turned in the warning about a potential assassination attempt on John Kennedy in Chicago on November the 2nd. The same Lee Harvey Oswald may well have been the one in Dallas. Lee Harvey Oswald may have been, in fact, a hero. He may have been working for the U.S. government and could have been the ultimate patsy. It is a fascinating five video series in YouTube, and I hope all of you will take a listen to it, as only Jim Morris could present. We're going to pause now and come back with Abraham Bolden and Jim and I and continue and tell you what happened as pertains to the Chicago attempt on John Kennedy's life. Remember, Jim said there were at least three that we know about. Back in a minute. Okay, let's get right back to our very special guest, Abraham Bolden. Uh, Jim, go ahead and, and set us up for the Chicago part of this, would you please? Okay. Well, actually, I'm sure uh, Ms. Bolden can tell us uh, most of the details, but uh, uh, the, the basic facts of the matter was that they received information in, uh, in Chicago that there might be an uh, attempt on the President of the United States. And what I find really interesting is, is that it involved a young man by the name of Tar uh, Thomas Arthur Valley, a member of the right-wing John Birch Society and a vocal Kennedy critic. And he was arrested by the Secret Service in Chicago. He had an M1 rifle, a much better quality rifle than oh, yeah. a Italian yeah. rifle that Oswald had, right. and 3,000 rounds of ammunition in his car. Wow. And so, yeah, you know, here we go. It's the alternative patsy. In Dallas, we had a, a, Oswald, who they said was a left winger and a loner, and he had an Italian war rifle, 6.5 millimeter. And in Chicago, it was uh, Thomas Arthur Valley uh, with an M1, 3,000 rounds of ammunition, and connected to right wing causes. Uh -huh. And I just have to throw this in. On the shooting of uh, President Reagan, 
okay, by John Hinckley. Mm -hmm. uh, they connected him uh, with uh, left-wing causes and said he had been tracking uh, Reagan around the country. Uh, less than a week after he was arrested, and that thing happened, the shooting of Reagan, they arrested another fella who had also been traveling around the country, in fact, stayed in the same hotel as Hinckley in Colorado, and he, too, was carrying uh, those uh, uh, damaging bullets. And he, too, uh -huh. had been writing uh -huh. love letters to Jody Foster, but he was connected to right-wing causes. So it's like they've got these Man, guys they, set they, up, and they just pick whichever one they want to use. This, that, that's, that, all right, let me just add to that. If any of you people have any question remaining that the government, the dark part of it, can do anything it wants at any time, I hope this puts that to sleep. They, they are absolutely capable, as, as Mr. Bolden will tell us, of penetrating anyone's email, anyone's private life, and setting people up. You can call it mind control. You can call it whatever you want. There are so many ways to go when you're trying to take somebody down. And as you just heard, we know just that little bit they could take either one they wanted. So uh, please, uh, Abraham, if you would, go ahead and tell us what happened. 